So this is the back of my Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet and I have the PCB removed and today we're going to be showing you how to add HDMI into your PCB so that you can output to HDMI for streaming purposes and also play on your cabinet at the same time. So I've removed everything from the case here and the extra supplies that you're going to need are two different items made by a company called Geekworm. The first one is called the Geekworm LVDS to HDMI converter board. Uh, this is about $37 if you get it straight from geekworm.com. You could also get them from AliExpress a little bit cheaper, but this is going to take your LVDS signal to change it to HDMI. Now the next thing we're going to need to do is use a splitter. So this is a signal distributor board also made by GeekPi, sorry, Geekworm. Worm. It's about uh, $8 or $9 depending on where you get it from the website as well. And this is going to split the signal out to uh, this board from here and then also out to the monitor. So we'll go ahead and show you how to install this really quickly. So let's start with the PCB and make sure you remember what's connected to your monitor. This is the power cable as well as the LVDS strip with the red wire facing this way. Once you disconnect this wire from the PCB itself, the only thing that's holding this piece up is the power cable. So you want to make sure you find another way to secure this and not have it hanging. The extra wires are going to make it hard to mount itself. So one of the things I might recommend is just using something like double-sided tape. I get good solid double-sided tape. If you can, put it on both sides to make it as extra sticky as possible. And you're just going to mount this backwards and leave it open, which actually might be better off for it anyways. But that way you can have it nicely mounted and secured and I'll have it worried about falling down. Next, we're going to take the signal splitter board and check it out. There's an in section here and two outputs. So the input is going to come from the PCB. So we're going to connect this wire, again, the red side facing on the left, to the stock PCB where the original cable was. Now this part can be a little bit tricky. You want to make sure you line it up and don't miss any pins. This is probably the most common mistake where you might miss a pin or an entire row. Don't miss it up and line it up correctly. Otherwise, you could fry your board. You can mess up a lot of pieces. All right, once that's nice and secure, uh, you have your output. So output one, this can go straight to your board. So this is going to repeat the signal directly back into your RQ1 up. So now that this circuit is complete, the board to the signal distributor to your monitor, this essentially is a stock cabinet and will work perfectly fine. Now to get the signal output to HDMI, we're going to use this Geekworm 1.5 board. And this is the one that I've used that tested and works well with the Marvel vs. Capcom. We're now going to use that second output row here for the out and put in this LVDS signal here. And that's essentially it. Now we've added an HDMI out from the PCB that you can use to stream as well as play on the cabinet at the same time. Now the compatibility of the different stream cards, um, I have tested a few. The one that I recommend the most is the Elgato HD60S. This one can actually translate the signal of the Geekworm correctly into whatever capture um, you know, streaming program that you're using. So this is the one that I highly recommend. I used a generic one that didn't work out quite as well and gave me all kinds of squiggly lines that you can kind of see here in this demo video. So don't use the generic ones. Um, this is the one that I've tested and recommend. And again, this can help you, uh, you know, stream for any purposes if you want to uh, show off your gameplay and uh, you can get a clean signal. So let's go ahead and plug this in and test it out. All right, now that we have this set up, let's go ahead and test out playing the game on the cabinet as well as streaming directly to this uh, StreamYard recording. And we got to address the big question here where, uh, where is MVC2 online? It still has been several months since the release of this cabinet. And unfortunately, during the last 1UP show, we didn't quite get the updates regarding this cabinet. And uh, all we saw was from CES about a month ago now that it was in QA stages. I wish they could give us more transparent updates. Um, you know, Cyrus was saying that he wants to be the bad guy and make sure he releases a good product, not a, a bad product. Um, but, you know, time is ticking. I know there's some people that have already returned the cabinet. Uh, you know, it's already past the return date for a lot of other vendors and people. So, um, yeah, for people that are wanting to play this online against other people and getting smashed, you know, you can't. But uh, I'm still enjoying this cabinet, playing it, um, all the other games that I didn't have on my original Marvel vs. Capcom. So I was being able to play Coda, um, and I'm still practicing how to play it good. But I, I really don't think I'm going to get it good until I can play against other people. I have not really invested that much time into Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'm still playing a lot of time into MVC 1, 
Still is my favorite game of all time. Yeah, my team doesn't do any damage, so <laughs> I gotta I gotta figure out how to get a uh, get a better OP team so I can actually do some damage when I do that. But hey, it is what it is. Let's go ahead and speed this up and finish out this match. Oh, I didn't kill her. All right. Yay. I tried to do some delayed hyper combos, but uh, again, my team is pretty weak sauce. But that's okay. That's it for this video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed seeing how to connect your Marvel vs. Capcom 2 cabinet to HDMI out in case you want to stream. Uh, I know that this method also works with the original Marvel vs. Capcom cabinet. I think this works with other cabinets too. Haven't tested out everything out, so definitely do it at your own risk. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.